what's up everybody? It is Mr. Boylan and today what in the heck are we gonna do in this video? We are going to describe the nature of metallic bonding and apply the theory to explain metallic properties such as thermal and electrical conductivity, malleability, and ductility. Wow, so many thrilling vocabulary words. I cannot wait to learn about them in this video. Yes! Ooh, let's break it down. First, we are going to describe the electron C model of metallic bonding. Second, we are then going to explain several properties of metallic bonding, including thermal and electrical conductivity, malleability, and ductility in terms of the electron C model. Okay, so far we've talked about ionic bonding, which is between a metal and a non-metal. The chemical bonding that results from the attraction between two metal atoms, however, and the surrounding sea of electrons is called, appropriately, metallic bonding. So as you take a look at your screen, here's a thrilling animation that illustrates the idea of metallic bonding. Instead of one atom ripping the electrons away from the other, with metallic bonding, we've got our positive metal cores represented by those gray spheres sort of sitting in this sea of mobile electrons. Now, why does this happen? Well, metals have very low effective nuclear charges, so they do not attract and hold each other's electrons very well. Let's CVR it up, take a look at your periodic table and recognize that your metal atoms will have effective core charges that are relatively low, plus one, plus two, plus three, not very attractive for those electrons. And so they just float about in this sea of electrons, not super attracted to any of those cores. And most metals have many empty valence level orbitals and these orbitals overlap between metal atoms and allow the electrons just to roam freely throughout the entire metal sample. So as you take a look at this image on your screen, notice that your metals on the left have this very nice overlap that occurs between their valence level orbitals. And so the electrons just sort of float between those. Pause the video and take a look at this image for a moment. Think about how important it's gonna be for some of the characteristics of metallic bonding to have those orbitals overlap versus having gaps in between those orbitals. Essentially, the electrons are said to be delocalized, which means that they do not belong to any one atom, but move freely about the entire metal's network of empty valence level orbitals. Metallic bonding, sea of electrons, metals, 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 metals. And it's this electron C model that we find in metallic bonding that contributes to a lot of the unique properties that we see in metals. For example, the freedom of electrons to move between metal atoms accounts for the very high electrical and thermal conductivity that is characteristic of all metals. Electrons can just flow right on through the sample. Electron C model, flowing on through carrying that current. Metals are also able to absorb a wide range of light frequencies and move up to higher energy levels. Excited state, the electrons immediately fall back down and emit the energy back in the form of light. Ground, which gives us the very shiny or lustrous appearance that we see with most metal surfaces. Ooh, shiny. Additionally, metallic bonding, this electron C model, allows most metals to be easily formed into desired shapes. This is because that metallic bonding is the same in all directions, allowing the atoms to easily slide past one another. Let's compare this to maybe an ionic compound. As you take a look at your screen, we've got on the left hand side, our original ionic crystal lattice. On the right hand side of your screen though, hammer on that ionic compound, those like charges will line up and then separate. In metallic bonding, however, the bonding is the same in all directions. So you hammer on this and nothing really changes. You don't have two like charges that line up right next to one another, causing repulsion. And so, Metals are typically very malleable, which is the ability of the substance to be hammered or beaten into thin sheets. Beat you into a thin sheet. Just kidding, violence is never the answer. Again, think of your bling when it comes to malleability. Hammering metals into thin sheets 
my favorite and most affordable metal, aluminum. Ductility, on the other hand, is the ability of a substance to be drawn or pulled through a small opening to produce a wire. Copper wire, some sort of gray colored wire, again, all due to the electron C model that we find in metallic bonding. And that's it for this video. Hope you had fun diving into the sea of electrons. Have a fantastic day.